happy we're, we're having it. I've been reading around the doc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's only one aspect of it that's very interesting, but that's between you and I of, uh, you know, <laughs> the fact that, yeah, you know, that you, you, you will be free and, you know, you know what I mean, right? Mm-hmm, I don't. Okay, all right, we don't. <laughs> But we're taking your questions on 055 11 Your questions, that's what we're doing this morning. And hopefully we are able to activate the phone lines also on 302 I have Dr. Paddy Ayete. He is the medical director Ob's gynae specialist, everything, think about it at Elimus Health. Doc, good morning, and you're welcome. Good morning, thank you. Can they get closer to the microphone for me? So, we said that we're going to talk about family planning and menopause Mm -hmm. today, and I am very happy. Menopause apparently has three stages Um, yes, perimenopause, Mm -hmm. menopause, Mm -hmm. and post menopause. Ayaka, okay, Mm -hmm. let's go through them now. So let's start from beginning, beginning. Before the peri So you are born a certain number of eggs. Okay. And unfortunately, those eggs, they, they diminish, they depreciate, they disappear mm. at a very, very fast rate. So is for there, some funny reason, is there a number? no, that's how, that's how we're, Do, we're created. Are we, no, putting, we are talking from 2 million down to 400,000 down to, you know. And then, and then, and then to the last. And then, yes, to the last. I see. Um, so... Usually those eggs are there and your at the beginning of your cycle, your hypothalamus sends a message to the pituitary. Pituitary sends a message to Doc, the ovary. Please. No, 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 it's okay. You will have I'm, to these ch- are the only words I'm mentioning. I'm not okay, doing anything. All right. <laughs> pituitary sends a message to the ovary. The ovary causes, the objective is to get one egg to grow. So they are all in like maybe class eight, class eight, um, class six children sitting around mm. then the F- fsh tells the ovary and says release one okay. to become a teenager and an adult that one as in the process of becoming a teenager and an adult releases um, estrogen and the estrogen is what is going to be a very important discussion further on right. so that estrogen controls all kinds of things in your body and then we have progesterone and then you have your menses or you get pregnant and it goes on as a cycle every month as we grow older, the number of eggs keep dropping. And after the age of 35, the number of eggs drop really, really fast. You know, it's, it's a precipitous decline. And that is why having children after the age of 35 is a lot more difficult than having it before 35. Mm. Just that the pool of eggs that you have to pick from keep reducing. Mm. And since the eggs are as old as you, that means the cotogue pain that you have, the, the eggs do have some. To- the, hey, my bro, my bro, the eggs to have some. It's, it's not like sperm that we produce new ones every time. Mm. That is a, we have to have they're, that discussion later. They are growing with you. But the eggs are growing with you. Wow. So that is, you know, that's our normal system. But as the number of eggs reduce, then the ability of the ovary to respond to the signals coming from the pituitary gland are diminishing. Mm. And so it then, it then produces less and less of the estrogen. The funny thing about estrogen is that as the levels goes up, it goes back to your um, brain and tells the brain, stop producing the FSH because the, of the estrogen is enough. Since you are producing less and less, that, feed, that feedback mechanism diminishes. So the FSH levels rise. And that is why there's a blood test that we do when you are reaching that age that tells you that, oh, you are becoming menopausal because the test shows that your levels have, 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 have risen, of the estrogen has risen. Okay. Of the FSH, sorry has risen because your estrogen levels are dropping. Yes. So the FSH causes you to produce estrogen. And if you don't produce and if you produce it tells the brain that it's enough, don't produce more oh. of the FSH. But since this level is not rising, this other one starts shouting to get you to produce more. And that tells us that Charlie we are getting there. Wow. For you, the perimenopause part is the part where your body starts basically showing the signs that, that the estrogen levels are dropping. dropping. And that is when the menses starts becoming a bit irregular. You start missing some menses. Your cycles may become increasingly shorter. Basically, you just notice that your menses is, is, is misbehaving. And during that period, the other signs start following. Doc, let me ask you questions. So I know that if you're a woman mm-hmm. 
and at a certain age your menses are acting up mm -hmm. it's it, they're irregular yes it gives the doctors cause for concern yes right so at what age do we begin to accept the irregularities you're talking about as okay you're getting there well you shouldn't accept it the idea is that if your menses have become irregular you should seek advice medical yes. advice your doctor will do the assessment mm -hmm. based on the findings he gets he can then tell you that oh this your irregularity it's due to um menopause okay. that is approaching this irregularity may also be due to a condition we call polycystic ovaries mm. that you have maybe your body has been managing your hormone levels until you got to something a point where it triggered a problem and now your body is no longer able to cope and therefore your, your hormones are your menses is now acting up this could also be related to the fact that some contraception that you are using is causing your menses to act up so it is not really an age thing okay it is we, you need to be assessed because i have a patient who was menopausal at 32 i have another one who was menopausal at 29 yeah. i have another one who was menopausal at a typical age of around 48 and is that regular 29 32? no 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 those are is that no, normal no, no those are not normal people so would I, I is there anything that can be done to reverse it maybe um we can make <laughs> the menses come back if it's the menses they want to see the challenge is the ability to have children i see with their own eggs is significantly diminished and I therefore see. it makes it very difficult for you to do that but making your menses come is one of the easiest things to do we can make your menses come like clockwork every month you can get pregnant but get, it's, it's it's not difficult at all ah okay so it really isn't an age thing for no. you to sit down and say that because you're maybe 45 and your menses have become irregular you cannot you tell yourself assume that, that it's menopause. oh no. it is menopause for so some then, people we, we've had mm, clients who mm. at that age around 45 the menses became abnormal and you'd assume that oh everything is okay but then assessment is done for them and discover that the funny bleeding she's having is due to endometrial cancer hmm. in the perimenopausal area is very easy to ignore it mm. Um, trying to read around, I don't know how authentic that is. I mean, the different, you know, pages I went and read says that your menses should have ceased for a year, 12 months. And that's when you, you, they declare you menopausal. Yes. Is that it? Yes, it's just, it's a definition, yes. No but menses the, for 12 months. And this is, um, after the assessment. No, when you go for it, you, we will ask you, how was your last flow? You will tell us. Okay. We will then calculate. If, on the other hand, you are wanting to use that definition for yourself, and you realize that your last menses was in um, January of last year, mm -hmm. and you are in that age bracket, or you've been having some of those symptoms before, as you may be having hot flashes, for example, before, the mood swings, and those, those things before, and you've also had your menses stopping it is fair to assume that most likely this is menses but as you mean this is menopause but as you mean you haven't had any of those problems uh, menses are just up for one year it may not be menopause it may not be menopause yeah. so i saw I somebody mean, two days ago she hasn't seen her menses for about a year and the person is not menopausal no she's not the hormones are messing up i see so what would you advise after how many irregularities should you be running to see your doctor first of all I would advise that you should have a a doctor that is you see regularly mm -hmm. uh, at least once a year even if everything is okay okay just to go and say hello how are you doing check me out everything is fine you go so if you have you have, you've had one irregular menses you've had by, by the second one you know everybody's allowed we say everybody's allowed to have one fit which is one convulsion anything more than that <laughs> <laughs> we have problems with you <laughs> So if you if you have one cycle that misbehaves, yeah, we can monitor it and see what the next one looks like. If the second cycle too is still misbehaving or you're having more than two of those episodes, I think you should get it checked out. Okay, good. And let's talk about the assessment. What is being assessed? Oh, first of all, um, in, in medicine we are we ask you lots of questions to try and find out what exactly is going on with you, mm -hmm. and there are questions that start from the head almost all the way to the toe. And after we've gone through all those questions one by one, there are test examinations that we can do and tests that we can run. 
at the end of those weeks, add all the information together, together and then come to a conclusion that, oh, indeed, this is menopause. Um, funny thing is the fact that it doesn't always come up, up here the way... Some people may not notice that their menses is misbehaving, but everybody in their house notices that they are acting a little bit crazy Strange. of me. But the truth of the matter is that they're not really crazy. It is the menopause. In times past, people have been sent to asylum because of oh. menopause are problems. Yeah. Now it looks like information abounds. Okay, so that will lead us into me asking. Your, I mean, there's, there's, there's a woman out there who is 40, 45, and the person knows that, look, you're inching towards mm. menopause. What should the person be expecting? Are there any lifestyle changes that this person will have to start making to be able to embrace menopause in a less complicated manner? Um, yes, there are certain things that we can do, but prevent it. I mean, things you can do before are still the things that we talk about, you know, from ages before. We expect you to exercise, we expect you to get adequate amount of sleep and rest, and then we expect you to consume stimulants in moderation. You understand? Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we expect you to, in addition to that, communicate to the people around you and to your loved ones if you start having any of these things. But before that, you need to know what to like expect or what kind of things that can occur to you if you are, if you are approaching that age. One of the obvious things I would say is that, oh, the menses is, you know, has, has undergone some changes. But that is not the only thing that, that occurs. Um, a lot of women complain of what you call the hot flashes, which is they sit there and they suddenly realize that their body starts feeling very, very warm, especially face um, and upper chest. And it can feel so warm that they want to take off their clothes. And so they want the air conditioning to be on a very cold level whilst the rest of the family is complaining that they are, they are feeling cold but she's still feeling feeling hot the hot flashes can occur in fact embarrassingly can occur at any time and at any location people have had it in the middle of the supermarkets where they are walking about and suddenly they have this wave of heat and then they start sweating all over the place that same problem can manifest in your sleep and therefore you can wake up in the night covered with sweat, totally covered with sweat. Some people are so bad, they have to change their sheets, they have to change their clothes, just because of the amount of sweat that they have produced under those circumstances in the, in the middle of the night. So for some, it's the hot flashes that, you know, becomes a thing that they really notice. Unfortunately, menopause affects the brain too. Mm. Um, estrogen somehow provides energy, or it facilitates the production of energy in the brain. And therefore, the brain when estrogen levels drop, do not work as well. It doesn't mean she's not sharp, but it means the brain, certain parts of the brain does not work as well. The result is that the ability to tolerate um, irritation significantly reduces. Mm. You understand? Because that part of the brain doesn't have, if you're hungry, you know you don't perform well as the way you, you So should. you get easily irritated. So you get easily irritated. Yeah. And sometimes impossible to live with. And Ow. if you don't communicate that challenge, something is wrong with me and I've noticed this about myself, people may think that, hey, those who are close to you, but they bear the brunt. It's those who are closest to you who bear the brunt of all these issues that you are going through. So they are the ones who would may actually notice that, ah, of late, she's become very irritable. Small thing you say, no, then she'll flare up and you don't even know when you can approach her. You come and tell her, today you told her something. Oh, oh the tap is not flowing. Oh, okay, uh, please arrange for uh, the, water, uh, the tanker to bring water. The next day you come, the tap is not flowing. It is your fault that water in sewage has put water off. What did I do? <laughs> that is when they start saying you are going crazy. Then they start saying you are going crazy. You understand? But somehow it becomes your fault. Meanwhile, you didn't do anything. But, oh my God. But no, it's just the, 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 the hormones, the hormones acting, up. acting up and the result that the brain is not getting energy it needs. And then you just, memory loss, things that they could remember easily they now don't remember them, you know, you know, uh, as well. So all these things are, are things that would, you, you, may, you may start noticing themselves. Mm. Words are difficult. A word that you'd use frequently now is like, um, um, you're looking for the word and it's not oh coming dear. and things of that sort. Then when, you when it comes, you continue. 
your thought process continues your brain is still functioning however your lower energy level in your brain is affecting these these, these aspects so those are the things that you may actually notice mm. when when or other people may observe about you and know that oh, you are getting into into the zone you'd realize that you're not functioning at optimum yes <laughs> and, level. And, and as one woman described it this is not me oh dear i can't find me oh me is missing and it's really confusing until she realized that this is what the problem is then she knows that oh okay it's either i would you know go through it or it's so bad i need medication to assist me to, to, to function the way I want to function. I was going to come there to ask you if there are interventions, if it is that bad. There are interventions. Um, in your lifestyle, we've talked about exercise. Mm-hmm. That if you, somehow, if you exercise, it's, it's noticed to improve this thing. Um, if you try and keep um, healthy as much as, as, much as possible. Um, they say stop consuming certain stimulants. The thing about a stimulant is that not all stimulants are triggers for you. So you need to observe. For some people, if they take a lot of spicy food, they start getting hot flashes and things of that sort. You should know the things that, for some people, it's tea and coffee. You understand? For some people, it's high sugar levels. So you listen to your body and you notice that, okay, I had a bad bout of hot flashes. What did I eat before? Last meal, the meal before the last. And try and associate uh, relationships between the things that you consume and the episodes that you don't like. Once you can find that association, there are things that you just remove from your, from your diet and you are, and you are fine. They say the Mediterranean diet is is um, it's helpful. It's helpful. And if you don't so have money should, for it, we should start eating like Italians and you start yeah, finding the kind of food that they eat and you eat some. But Father says that wherever God puts you, He has put the right nutrition and the, the right things there. You have to find it. You have to find it. Unfortunately, in our lives, we have moved to eating less and less greens and vegetables. And the only thing when we talk about the greens is salads. In fact, the major green in our diet is contumbri. Maybe number two is okru. After that, um, maybe two is afi, then it goes down downhill from there. We rarely eat a lot of leaves in, in, in our diet. The Nigerians eat a lot more leaves than, than, we, than do. we do. Um, there are some good pepper soup with leaves inside, but it's fine. It's dark. <laughs> yeah, so so they, they actually adjust. They have more a wider variety and those of help. leaves in our diet. And those help. Mm. Um, they want you to have things they call there are some plants that contain some amount of estrogen inside plant estrogen if you have more of those in your in your diet um, um, nuts, seeds um, apricots soy or soy based products or soya based products all those things give you a little bit more um, natural estrogen okay. inside in, um, inside inside you um, so like so we've got your diet you've got your exercise it's you've got avoid triggers um there are other issues that one would have all the way down to dry skin and needing to moisturize the the the, the vagina because of pain that one has during intercourse and therefore um they actually moisturizers that you can use when you're not trying to have sex just the way you moisturize your skin and uh, they've got creams too out there to moisture uh, and infuse so that when uh, under normal circumstances you don't have the the, the dry sensations over there, even when you're not having sex. You're pushing us there. So I, I have a, a friend who is um, 49. I think has started experiencing the irregularities and then she asked that I ask you a question. But before then, I want us to establish these symptoms we are talking about. They're not cast in stone for everybody, no, right? No, no, no. Some get more than others. So the percentages will tell you this is 70%, this is 40%. Everybody's story is a little bit different. Great. You just need to figure out you know, we all know your menses is going to misbehave, uh-huh. but the extent to which you have hot flashes varies from, from person to person. person to the the extent that you would have, you know, the memory issues or the emotional ability, uh, liability of things, so varies from one person to another. So you have to, it's your own story. And therefore the treatment your friend is on is not the same treatment that you would it also be, be on. on. Great. So she, she has two questions that there are times that her desire for sex goes up like she she wants to have sex very frequently and often Mm -hmm. sometimes in a a space of two three months she realizes that she wants it very often there are times too 
she just doesn't even want to hear the sound of it mm -hmm. and that can go on for so long mm -hmm. she is wondering what's accounting for that as well is this all part of menopause yes and it's actually more typical that the desire for sex drops it will drop yes okay but maybe for a period of in her case in particular for a period in time uh, her husband has been taking her to some restaurants be that she, they make some nice food that has some things be that mm. allows her estrogens to balance out a little bit and the result is that her libido comes up you know a little bit more and then since she's not been taking her to that restaurant in, 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 in after like maybe two months or something of that sort she doesn't eat that kind of food again and though it and so it goes down um, the point i'm just trying to make is that all kinds of things affect the libido i mean we've got now there are supplements for instance that we can give to you mm. and over a period of time it increases your libido so wow. it's no longer as bad as it used to be that same supplement too improves the hot flashes because what it tends to do is that there are hormones that work against your estrogen mm. if you can get that hormone to go down estrogen levels would rise okay and this particular supplement gets that that hormone to, to go, go down, down for allows the estrogen so levels to rise, rise but it also causes your male hormones to rise up a little bit oh. and that rise in the male hormone results in the increase in libido i see so one product but is able to do it two separate things, things. And it makes a difference in, in the lives of of, of 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 people so in her case yes it happens that way um she needs to in, find a way to you know communicate that to her husband that there shall be years of farming and months of plenty. So, <laughs> when it comes, you take advantage. When you can take advantage of it and, and fill your bands. I have a lot of questions coming up, but I want to find out because this is home affairs, really. We're talking health, but you want to find out when a woman is going through all of these ups and downs, and sometimes she doesn't even understand what's happening to her. What support um, should the men give? around this time because like you're saying i remember having a conversation with one of my bosses and then he talked about the fact that issues that had happened like way back mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that they had dealt with and sorted out could be an issue that will come back to the table yes. with you know wife being so angry sometimes crying as if it is just happening and all that can be very 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 frustrating mm. there are times you just want to run away from the person and go like damn crazy so what support would you advise men to give to their their, their wives um, or their women you know when we're, they're going through these phases okay first of all we need to understand that men are not mind readers <laughs> when God created us, He took away that ability mm. and gave it double portion to the women. Uh, so, so women read minds better. Oh, you can ask <laughs> one small question, and they are thinking about what you are thinking about, and what you haven't thought about, and what you haven't thought about, <laughs> and they give you an answer based on the question they have asked in their head, which has nothing to do with the question you asked. <laughs> You understand? And when understand. you're like, oh, but you, that's not what I asked. And they're still arguing based on, you know, what? it is not. <laughs> I beg you, just answer the question that was asked and not what and you think was asked. On. But because of that, men have no ability to read minds. And because we don't have the ability to read minds, we cannot know what is wrong with you until you say it. A mm. man, even if it is in front of him, does not see. Let alone him not even being told. So I beg you, women. If something is going on, just tell him, make him understand that, Charlie, so I'm not right. Something is not right with me. I am not feeling myself. Oh. That communication needs to be there, including I am not feeling loved. Then you say, but I'm doing all the nice things. Uh, yes, but I'm still not feeling loved. Something is not right. Once you understand that something is not right, then he knows that, oh, okay, now activate the super caring, super loving, super attentive, ignore all ills you know, see, see no, no evil, evil respond no. to nothing <laughs> accept that your wife has traveled and a surrogate is in her place and a surrogate misbehaves and reports to your wife you know all that kind of stuff but do you have hope that that face will go away it will go. Great. No, it will go. great but you need to know that a she's in that face you men also need to observe because no matter how hard we say tell us so women will not tell you because she expects you to know so you need to accept the fact that sometimes you need to 
improve in fact the thing is that if you are caring enough and you pay attention to me enough and you see me enough oh, you will know that mm -hmm. something has changed yeah. and you will try to find out and be caring other than me coming to you to, you know that you thing. see why i say men shouldn't <laughs> try and understand women you should just accept them the way they are life goes very well oh, so in the light of what you have just said know that <laughs> some people will be required to descend that something is wrong with them you have to play god all, all, all depends on your marking scheme in your house <laughs> <laughs> so based on that mm. if you observe that something is going on and she's getting to that age or even a little bit earlier maybe you need to be a little bit more understanding maybe you need to have certain conversations to try uh, find, oh is something wrong is everything okay do you feel okay uh, even if she chops off your head when you ask that question it's also a sign of the fact that oh there's something wrong Rather than, well, because not asking, Max shall be deducted from your Max and shall be held against you for now and forever. Mm -hmm. So try and, you know, make inquiries. And after that, you just need to be supportive. Very supportive. You need to be supportive. It means sometimes you need to sleep with a sweater on because the AC is going to be on 16. Yes. Sleep with a sweater. It means sometimes you roll up, you roll on the bed and discover that the bed sheet is wet because she's been sweating. Just get oh. up, change the sheets, you know. It's not a big deal. Be nice. Just be nice. You need to be very... Because know that it shall pass. And if you realize that, no, this thing is getting very serious, go with her to a doctor, to a doctor and so that she can be given the right kind of support and medication to ensure that her system, her hormones get a bit more balanced such that her, she can function the way she used to function and be the woman that you fell in love with so many years ago which is even better now because you don't have to worry about children and pregnancy beautiful i see what a lot of men are doing now which i think is so admirable is taking their wives to antenatal care mm -hmm. you know right from day one they're they're there they take time off work because they have to go see the doctor and come back i i find that very admirable and i think that look you guys will have to extend it to the women as as well not just because you have a baby coming that will bear your name but this is the woman who is the vessel carrying the baby. And if we're growing and getting to that space, I think you guys will have to extend the support to that level so that, you know, you, you chop all the, the accolades through and through. I have a question here that says, good morning, Adam, and to you, Doc. I love Doc's responses to your questions about what age we can peg menopause. I want to find out, can menopause be hereditary? So that my mom had hairs at 34. Um, I will have mine at 34. Um, yeah, yes, it yes. It, it, there's a relationship between um, the age which you have menopause and your, your siblings and your mother. And your Are grandmother. you serious? Yes. So if your mother had an early menopause, you need, you need to know that it is likely you have an early menopause. So if mm. your mother's menopause was at 34 and you are 26, I suggest that you should take the whole having children business very, very seriously because it's likely that yours too may come early. Wow. That's new. Please, I want to find out if menopause can cause intermittent tiredness, even if you're not actually doing anything strange. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Fatigue, <laughs> tiredness, on and off, unexpected. You are, you are functioning, doing something, and next thing you say is, hey, my bro. This so you hear that, hey, me my bro, me my bro. It is, I beg you, it is normal. This menopause business. <laughs> okay, so Doc says yes. When you reach menopause, can you be pregnant through IVF as my wife is getting there? The doctor says her eggs have reduced. And does blood group also affect fertility like the O positive group? This is from Kwame. Blood group, no, you can still get pregnant. And yes, even if you're approaching menopause, there are some tricks we can do to make your menses come back and to make the womb suitable for a pregnancy and to put a pregnancy inside for you to be able to have a baby. Uh, we don't like doing it very much because it's difficult. Mm. But can you do it? Yes. I've it's got clients right now that has, that has been done for them. They are pregnant and the pregnancies are going on. The challenge has been, can the uterus Support. come back mm. to life? After what? After menopause. Mm. Because if, if, once you're menopausal, the endometrium has stopped shedding. Now we need to make the endometrium rebuild to become good again, to be able to put a baby inside. So that is where the problem it's com is. Quite complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. So it's sometimes three, four months, you're just working to build it. 
once you build it can it build can it shed can it be thick enough will it be well nourished if you get it back to that stage then you should able to put a pregnancy inside and yes the pregnancy can stay and yes they can have children i can imagine that will be also, that will also be very expensive it is more expensive than if a 35 year old woman is trying to have a, a pregnancy oh, by ivf or a 30 year old woman so mm. when people tell you oh i haven't reached there yet so let me wait small we are like it is a lot easier if you do it when you're younger then if you wait until you are older, the challenges are significantly right. more. Wow. Great. So it's possible for a menopausal woman to get pregnant by IVF. 0302216541. We will activate the phone lines. I doubt if we're able to veer into the conversation on family planning because I, I that's that. also a big one. Don't, don't worry. We're not asking you to come back next week. Thank we you will very find much. time to do that one. Ne next year. Because people have ne a lot year. of questions. <laughs> so we will find time to talk about family planning. I think people have a lot of questions. So probably we'll just focus on this and then find time to do family planning. Uh, blessed morning, Adam. Blessed morning to you. Yeah, I have enjoyed your program today. Thank you. Please, can someone take um, evening primrose to curb all these menopausal discomfort? Well, it's one of the products that have been suggested may improve your this, but it works on it, it's an individual thing. thing. There are things that we know if you take this, it improves that. If you take this, it improves that. There are some too that people get an improvement on it. So, hey. Evening primos, we, we use it for premenopausal symptoms, premenopausal, um, premenstrual sim um, symptoms Sim as well. Okay. So if you use it for it and it works for you, hey, you can try it. Just one bottle. Great. Hello, good morning, Ajiman Joseph. Ajiman Joseph, are you there? Good morning to you. How are well, you? I'm doing well. Great. I am doing well. Yourself? Oh, my God, we some also strong. Beautiful. Let's hear you. Yeah, I want to ask a simple question. For the monopause issue, is there something that the ladies do that they experience monopause earlier than it used to be? <laughs> is there something that a woman can deliberately do? Um, uh, Maybe like, deliberately uh, or like, like what? Like sometimes um, they are they are eating habits, and then maybe sometimes the kind of cream that they use, and some of them the things that they use um, sometimes in, I mean. Those kind of makeups and other things, and oh. do they have effect on them? Okay, so for makeups and the rest, typically no. Okay. Um, however, there are creams that people use, especially bleaching creams. They contain one of the chemicals that works against estrogen. So if you use that, your estrogen levels are being counteracted, and okay. therefore your your body be act menopausal before you actually menopausal so those are some of the things that we need to be we need to be careful, careful about, about. Um, diet we want you to be healthy we want you not to be carrying excess fat about excess fat about your body causes insulin resistance insulin resistance works against your your female hormones and the result is that you may produce less estrogen and more androgens and that will cause also different problems inside your body and causes you to have irregular menses and things of that sort so be overweight is not a healthy idea if you are trying to um, ensure that you have got good menstrual health. So those are the things that, yes, can have an impact. Interesting. Um, good morning, Adam. Anytime you're having this conversation, the atmosphere in my home changes because I'm trying to have a child for 10 years now. And, uh, and what science doc is talking about, I'm experiencing it. My husband is mad and he won't talk, all efforts is not working. And I'm even crying, this is from mommy in Takradi. Yeah, but it is possible, like I just said, even though you are having a menopausal symptom, it is possible to have uh, a, child. a child. I think in your case, you need to see an IVF specialist. A fertility specialist who does IVF, and then let him go through the options that are available for you. And if you're a suitable candidate, it is possible to have um, um, uh, a child. Um, it is happening all the time in this country. 51, 52, um, even 56 recently. It's it's not impossible. Mami, I'm wondering if you are on, you're seeing a doctor, you have a doctor, you're seeing and what conversations are coming up because I, I don't think that sitting in your bed and crying no, is, the problem, is the solution. And if you and your husband are also not on the same page when it comes to handling some of these things, it's also a bit of a challenge. So... Um, I guess you guys will have to do a lot of talking and then get your doctor deeply involved. But if you want to see 
um, Dr. Haiti, we'll put the number out there as well so that you're able to book an appointment and have a conversation on the next steps you can take. But hey, I know it's not a very comfortable place to be or will be well have faith. Now, uh, some men are not supportive at all. I once forgot to tell my husband I have finished using the loo and he said I am wicked and insane. Oh Christ, he is ignoring me and does not talk to me. Is this man also suffering from Papa Puss? <laughs> what is that? This is Home Affairs. We're live on Joy 99.7 FM, also on Joy Prime Television. We are having a conversation with the ops and gynae specialist, and our focus is on menopause. We thought we could do menopause and family planning, but these are two big subjects we're unable to handle in one show. So we're focusing on menopause now. Some other time, we will have a conversation on family planning. Doc. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Good morning. Doc, please hold on. We have um, somebody on the line. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name, please? Please, I'm Aisha. Ivy. Aisha. Aisha, great. Aisha, how are you this morning? Fine, thank you. Great. Please just hear you. Yeah. Hello. Aisha, you're on air. We can hear you. Uh, okay, please. My name is Aisha. Aisha. Yes, Aisha, mm -hmm. I can hear you. I'm 43. Yes, I now experience stiffness of the... Yes, I said I'm 43 years now. Okay. Yes, I said I'm 43 years. And I do experience stiffness of the hand, especially the fingers. Okay. So you want to find out what's causing it? Is it a sign of menopause or some? Uh, what is it? Okay, all right. No, status on the finger could be so many things, and I think it is most likely it may be. A, she's not mentioned other problems apart from stiffness of the finger. Most probably, it is just stiffness of the finger, and the problem will be local. I would suggest that she sees a doctor to take a look at it. Okay, Aisha. So you have to see a doctor. That cannot be individually, um, you know. Um, said to be a sign of menopause. Good morning, Eden. Please ask the doctor. I am 45. My heart and my chest beats very fast. I have hot flashes. I have done a estrogen test. The doctor says everything is okay, but it, would, it could be symptoms of premenopause. How true is this? She has hot flashes and she has her heart is beating fast. Mm -hmm. eh. <laughs> and she's at the right age too yes most likely that is it that is it all right most likely that is it okay. so you know she should start making adjustments as to how she can she can cope with it quick okay good morning we have someone on the line hello good morning hello good morning how are you could you speak up for me yeah is it better now yes it is okay what's well, your name I, please Nana Kwesi. hi Nana K. Yes, madam. <laughs> <laughs> so mine is the adapt. So I would like to say that I'm also people having children as and when they want. But I also like for them to be aware of what is being discussed this morning so that they will know that it could be that as at the time they want to have a child who go as normal as it is is supposed to or this could be the reality so that they will be prepared and whatever that may be it wouldn't be a worry for them because most of the times when elderly people have children all we hear is oh this person was this old and had a child but as to what they went through it's not told do you understand yes so we do i guess we, we we are aware of some of the we be prepared for the consequences, whether it goes normal or not. Yeah. And the main to lashing out do not solve the problem. Provide solution and stop misbehaving. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much, Dana Chrissy. <laughs> Good morning, Adam. Please, I will be 47 tomorrow. Hooray, congratulations and happy birthday to you in advance. And I want to have another child because I have only one child. Can I give birth at this age? Can she give birth? 
yes. 47. Yes, she can. Will she go through a lot to achieve that pregnancy? Yes, yes she, she will. will. And you have a discussion with your doctor. He will discuss your options with you and you will make a choice. Okay. Because you have to decide that I'm willing to make the commitment and the necessary invest, investment in time and effort and money to achieve that objective. Okay, sis. So, Doc says that, yes, you can. Will you um, have to go through a bit more to have the baby? Most likely. So, have a conversation with your doctor and you can start working at that. All hope is not lost. That's the best part of it. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Great. May I know your name? My name is Tony. Tony. All right, Tony. You're on there. Let's hear you. Uh, yes. There's a program in uh, Joy Primary. Huh? And I want to contribute. I want, uh, how do you call it? I want to know. Yes, Tony, please ask your question. Yeah, I want to know from the doctor that what time? What time? Uh, uh, you can't make a distant uh, transplant. Which transplant are we talking about? I'm talking about if you go to the doctor and you want a uh, 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 call, your partner cannot give a baby. And then you want to go to the doctor for trans, uh, transplant, something like that. Okay, he And understands. I want to know from the woman. Uh, I, uh, Sorry, I want to know from the doctor that uh, at what age it cannot do it. Okay. Doc, do you yeah. understand? At what age can it not be, be done? done? Yes. The yeah. issue is more of how fit or suitable she is. There are people okay. who are at the age of 30 and you check them out, they can see that it's not going to, you, you, you to be successful because the uterus is just not able to carry. Okay. There are some who are 50 and you check the uterus, it looks nice and good. It responds to medication, it is shedding nicely, and, and you're able to get a message from it, and she can carry okay. it. So all okay. depends on the individual. After the assessment, we would know. Okay. 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 Um, thank you. Eh? Yeah, you're welcome. Great. Thank you. Daniela, could you click on that particular where the cursor is for me? Thanks, Adam. Quick adjustment as in, um, as in when, how do I cope, or what to do? I'm taking a well woman. Okay, it's the same person who talked about the heart beating and she, she's asking if the symptoms no, could be... No, she, she, she needs to see a physician. Okay. Because we, we have to assess you and think whether is it significant enough for us to give you... Something. Something. There are various things that can be given to you. Some, no problems, no side effects, just take it, no problem. There are others that are actually come with its own challenges and that we must be convinced that A, you can manage it and B, to benefit you. So it's not just a matter of you really need to go and take this or go and take that. No. Mm, okay. No. Yeah, I, I think some of us tend to do that a lot. We have conversations with our friends, um, with our cousins, our siblings, and our aunties, and we're like, oh, menopause is hitting. Then the person will tell you, oh, take this, take this. I was taking this, it was helping. But some of these things, it's very important that you have a conversation with your doctor and you're put on the right management. It's very important. Hi, Diamond. Hello, Diamond. Good morning. Morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. We need some diamonds, so. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you're thank there. We can hear you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, I've married my wife for since 2008. And uh, dramatically, before our marriage, she got pregnant. So we have to quickly rush and make sure that uh, we perform the marriage right. And uh, I think about four, three months or so after the the marriage, then the pregnant gospel. Oh. And uh, after that, we, it took some time before she got pregnant again. Within the same period of three months, she lost the pregnancy again. again. And since then, she has not conceived again. 
We didn't know what we went to. See gynecology at Kolebu. And uh, they have also advised us what we should do. We follow all those process. So it's still the same. And uh, recently we met uh, a doctor in a private facility, which he also conducted. Maybe I was thinking that maybe the problem was coming from me. That's why he's not considering. Which uh, he conducted some seeming tests on me. Then after that, she said, well, everything of me That's is fine. okay. But we don't know what is actually happening and she's still not taking a seat. And I saw that uh, the doctor was very passionate in explaining some of these things, especially uh, uh, monopoly. But I feel that I need to chip in also my challenges and see whether he can be of help to us. Okay, before Doc comes in, let me ask you, so how old is your wife now? My wife is about 38 now. Okay. The two pregnancies that were lost are about the same time, did they tell you what they diagnosed, what the causes could be? No, they didn't, didn't tell ask. Me. What was, they said that, um, after the second conceive, they said there was a water in the womb. They said there was a water which they did some operation in there. You know, they know the second, the first pregnancy before, when the blood was coming out, <sighs> they need to go and do a DNC for her. Because okay. the, according to the doctor, the future cannot survive. So okay. they need to take it out from her, which they did. Okay. Doc? It sounds like she's got a particular kind of problem. Uh, the nature of the two miscarriages suggests a particular problem. And that is consistent with her having difficulty in getting pregnant subsequently. Mm. Um, if it is that, fixable. Yeah. However, there may be other challenges that may be um, involved. So oh. hope, ho hopefully she still has some... some I think it's, it's, it's not an impossible case. The age, the age is helpful. And the nature of the problem that he has described to you is something that can actually be be be, 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 uh, be, be addressed. So okay. she needs to see a fertility specialist. If she does, we should be able to sort it out. Okay, great. Oh, too bad your line dropped. Um, good morning, dog. This is Selassie, your patient and a friend. I just turned forty-eight. My problem is, I feel pain under my foot when walking. I feel tired and i do not like noisy people around me nowadays is it also a sign of menopause and what should be done hi selassie how are you doing oh, it does look like you are getting there mm, <laughs> the things you are mentioning in India, mm, it looks like you are getting there well what should be done the question is how how much does it affect you one of the things in africa that tends to happen is that we try and give you an opportunity to run through it as peacefully as possible the challenge comes with people who are having difficulty to do that and they are, it's the, the effects are really affecting their life those are the ones that actually need support so if um as for noisy people here yeah, you can try and manage them uh, the pain in the foot yes we need to take a look at that one and try and figure it out um so if your symptoms are not too bad and you are coping it's okay if your symptoms are worrying you significantly something needs to be done about it okay. you don't need to go through this and keep suffering unnecessarily when there are options available for you okay this is from a very good friend she says that does the pill help with the menstrual irregularities i notice when i am not on the pill i miss my period but when i am on it it comes normal and she's yes. around 49 the pill about. does help to make the menses come um you know regularly um, the question is what are we trying to achieve if it's just a regular message you're trying to achieve yeah well maybe it's a method but if you are around menopause and your message does not come regularly it's part of the part of the process i don't know why you would want your message to be coming more regularly at that age when you are trying to actually stop having a message <laughs> okay yeah, each to his own so that's it for you it says hi ajara good morning hello good morning ajara can you hear us yes please okay please please go ahead with your question 
Um, I actually need a uh, doctor's contact and the facility he's coming from so that I can go see him. Okay, Elimus Health. We'll put the number out there before we leave, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Now, we will be wrapping up very soon. Daniela, do we have anybody else on the line or any more questions to do? <laughs> okay, we have one last caller. We'll pick that one and then we will wrap up on the show. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Are you? I am well, thank you. May we know your name? I'm Collins. Okay, Collins. Yes. Collins, let's hear you. Yes, please. I want to find out. Uh, my wife is a... Uh, 54, going to 55 years now, mm. and she's still uh, experiencing her menstruation. Wow. She's still experiencing? Yeah. Menstruation. Oh, yeah. That's not normal. That's not typical Which at all. age was the 50? 65. Did you say 60? I said 65. 5, 5. 4, 5, 5, 5. 5, 5. Yes. Well, yes, some people can go a bit longer than 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 usual it comes every month regularly mm -hmm. yes every month regularly okay meanwhile when she was younger joy prime the ultimate experience